Hey y'all, it's Anna. I am here to talk about makeup, hair, and this look right here. If you'd like to continue watching, I'm going to show it a little bit later. Um, first, of course, I want to start off with a cocktail. Um, today I'm going to do the French 75, which is Prosecco, gin, lemon juice, and simple syrup. Simple syrup's very simple. It's water and sugar, equal parts, blended together over medium high heat. And then you gotta wait four hours for it to uh, come together and become a syrup of syrup of deliciousness. But anyways, so today you have your shaker. I have a little mini shaker. It's a little effing vodka shaker. I love it. Um, anyways, you put ice in it, and then you take your gin, which naturally I have the little minis because I love them. Um, so it's one ounce gin-ish, and then half an ounce of simple syrup in my little penguin shot glass because why not? And then your lemon juice. I freshly squeezed this. I saved you the time of watching that, so I did that myself. And then you add that all into the shaker. Do not put the Prosecco in before you shake it. Trust me, I've done that, and that's embarrassing. Uh, one time or another. And And then you pour it in. You can either do a martini glass, or I have only seen it in a champagne glass. I like it better in the champagne glass because it looks prettier. But then it goes about halfway full. That's why I like the mini shaker. And then you take your Prosecco. Oh, great. Okay, no spillage. You pour the rest to the top. Of Prosecco. Ah! Yes, I just did that. Don't make fun of me. Can't I can't spill any champagne or Prosecco? Excuse me, it's not French. Okay, and then you garnish with a little lemon wheel thing. It goes right in. And sometimes you kind of, I think you're supposed to go around the glass with it and then drop it in. And I just did too. Oh, it's delicious. Be careful though, because these are quite strong. Trust me. I know these things. Anyways. Anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna keep watching. I'm gonna show you how to do this look and how to do this bun, this fantastic bun. And I hope you continue drinking your French 75. Okay, we're back. Um, I am fresh faced and now I'm gonna start my hair first so that my um, makeup is just a little bit easier to do. And so when you wanna do the puff, you kinda have to grab from the sides, get straight in the middle so it's like that. Thing. But if you don't like to tease your hair, like I don't like to tease my hair, um, I like to, I got this new, um, from Sephora, this little travel size uh, dry bar stuff, and oh my god, they're so awesome. And so I use this texturizing spray out of that, um, it's called the Triple Sec 3-in-1, um, it really does amplify your hair without actually damaging it and without doing all the teasing and it keeps that poof pretty pretty high up there. You just squirt it a little bit and then you twist and then you push it forward. See? So you push it, you get this little fish man. You take your bobby pins. I use blonde ones obviously. And you stick one in there, and you stick the other one and cross it over. So you have two bobby pins holding it together. Now you fix it, 
And then you have your ponytail. Try to get all of those bumps out and try to make it as high as you can make it. And tight. You want it tight. <laughs> So, there you go. Got your ponytail. I use a little bit more texturizing spray just to kind of keep it texturized. Then you take your little, this little look, funny looking foam thing that I got from Ulta. Um, it really does keep the bun in place. And it's super easy. You just pull your ponytail through it. And then you pull it down to the ends of where you're, if you have layers like I do, you kind of just have to go to the first layer. And then you start twisting, twist and twist, twist and twist and twist. Then you go up, you push it, push it down in the back, and then move your hair around it. So, ta-da! There's your bun. And then you use some extra bobby pins up in the top to kind of keep the bun down on your head. And then some in the back. And now we're gonna do makeup. Well, hold on. I forgot hairspray. So, you gotta stick it all together. For makeup, we always want to start with a primer. I use the Lorac Porefection uh, Oil-Free one. They have a creamy one for drier skin, but I prefer this one. And you always want to take it in and out. And then same thing with the forehead. And get it everywhere you're going to be putting makeup. And everywhere you want it to stay matte, if you like that matte finish. Okay, and then you also want to do your eyelids if you want your makeup to stay uncreased. I always start with my foundation first. Um, some people don't. Some people would rather do their eye makeup first so they can wipe off whatever excess falls. But if you do your foundation first, I feel like it looks better, in my opinion. That's just me. So... Today I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Fluid SPF 15 in the color NW20. Um, I like this for full coverage. It really looks good. Um, and then I use my Tarte. This is my favorite foundation brush ever. I got it from like a QVC um, special on we had like their Tarte Amazonian clay foundation, and I used that for a little while, but I didn't really like it. So I like the brush, though. I'm gonna. Hold on to this brush as long as I can. But yeah, so you pour a little bit on your hand. And then you go around your cheeks first. The best part about this brush is it really gets everything even. You don't have to worry about it later. Sorry, I don't have a HD camera <laughs> otherwise you could see this a little bit better and I'm using for concealer today the Anastasia Beverly Hills concealer in that one 0 0.75 it's very thick so a little bit goes a long way and you want to start in your inner corner get everywhere that you need to conceal I go all the way down to my nose. I get a lot of dark circles and I get dark spots. I don't know why. Probably a lack of sleep. <laughs> and then you also want to get, if you get oily, cupid sparrow on your chin and in the center of your forehead. So you look like a crazy person. But, you take your blender uh, thing, sponge, blender, beauty blender, <laughs> that's what it's called. 
And then you blend in your concealer. And that is just by tapping. Make sure it's good and damp so that it really gets it. This thing is so amazing. I absolutely love it. I can't, I couldn't live without it after I found out about it. It's like you, you didn't know you loved it until you got it. And then you're like, how did I live without it? Just set my concealer first before applying eye makeup because then it really will, if you're, um, if you have any uh, shadow that falls onto your cheeks up here, you can just wipe it away. It won't stick, like if it's still sticky from the concealer. Uh, for to set it, I'm using the Lorac uh, Pro Contour um, palette. And the ones that I like to use are the, where are they? It's like banana? No, it's yellow highlight and beige highlight. I like to mix them too, so it kind of, that's just my coloring, so that's what works best for me. Um, you can always try one or the other, or not even this palette at all. But whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but it really helps to set your concealer so that it doesn't crack. And it stays good all day. I'm going to use the Buxom, what I talked about last week, their new palette in Dolly's Wild Side eyeshadow palette. Um, I'm going to use this middle one for my actual eyelid first. And I use, I got these awesome brushes from um, Ulta, it's the It brushes. I guess it's the brand that they decided to go with Ulta, but I really love them also because it kind of helps you out because it says on there all over and crease and it tells you which side that you, you can use. If We'll start with the actual eyelid. Don't go all the way to your eyebrow because you don't want that color, that dark color all the way up there. The crease side, you're going to use the um, little bit darker one. It's this down here. It's like a shimmery and that's what I'm putting in my crease. You go all the way to the inner corner of your eye. You're not like in the inner corner, just to it. And you blend, blend, blend. Yeah. And you take your blender and you use the darker shade right here for your, whoop, right here. For, it's kind of like a shimmery gold, and so if you use that um, in your inner corner or your outer corner right here, it kind of adds a little extra. It keeps your eyes a little, a little pop. So you follow that V shape. Ulta tier, it's the Studio Gear number 35. It's my favorite ever um, for blending. And so if you want a good blender, and fun fact, if you get this, they said that it never, if you ever need to return it, like if the bristles start falling out or if you just need a new one, they take it back even if you've been using it for like a year or two um, because you're never supposed to have to replace it. It should be that great. And so they allow you to, or Studio Gear, I guess, has that, um, contract with Ulta where you can just bring it back um, without any extra cost. And then for a little bit darker in the crease, actually this is probably a good day look, but if you wanted to keep it, keep it going, you use um, in the matte palette, it's this, where is it? This dark gray one is what I'm going to use kind of in the crease. I'm going to keep blending and keep blending just to give a little extra. For the inner corners, I'm gonna use my MAC 247 brush, and it's gonna be this really light, light glittery one right here. We're gonna put it right 
only in the corners. Make sure there's no lines. Some people don't do their eyebrows till later. I don't really do a big eyebrow though, so I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Brow Waves in the color Taupe. And you always want to brush your eyebrows first and get them into shape. A lot of people don't do that. Even if you don't color them in, it's good just to brush them. Like you brush your hair. And then you just, I just fill in the the holes or the little spots that are not there. Then hello, you have brows. Uh, this is the brow duality. Hmm? And the highlighting duo pencil. And so it has the matte and the shimmer side. And I really like this, especially depending on which um, which color or if you did a matte or a shimmer eyeshadow, it kind of goes with it. And since I did a shimmer, you only go in the center of the arch over, so you're not over highlighting your eyebrow. You never want to over highlight and then just kind of rub it in so there's no line. So there. I'll do my um, tight line first in on the top and the bottom just to I have huge eyes, and so I need for it to look a little bit smaller. And if you mess up, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Everyone does. <laughs> After you do your tight line, um, I'm going to use the Tattoo Liner in Trooper from the Kat Von D um, line. And if you, I'm not going to do that big of a cat eye or anything, just a little wing. And it's best if you start on the bottom and go up and kind of meet your eyebrow right there. And that just gives you an idea of where you need to go. And so I do the bottom first, and then the top, and then you fill it in. Make sure there's... You always want to start on the outer before you go in if you want to continue it in. I sometimes go just to the middle. I don't want it to be too intense because I'm not going anywhere tonight. To curl your lashes. Especially if you're before you put on any falsies. You will always want to curl your natural lashes. And then I'm going to use the Lorac Pro and Fiber uh, Mascara just to put a, a light coat on it before I put any falsies on. And I'm only using half falsies today. So this brush is awesome. Look at that. It's huge. So don't poke your eye out. I warn you. I've done it already. Giant mascara brush. It's kind of intimidating, to be honest. Dang. I think these are Ardell uh, 315 half lashes um, and the best glue in the world, the House of Lashes. I don't have the one in black. I wish I did because that one would be awesome because I usually wear black eyeliner with it, um, but I don't. Round them out. I put them on my finger and just kind of let them sit like a little caterpillar. Okay. A little goes a long way again. And then you have to wait. Waiting, 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 waiting. Wait. Okay, we waited long enough. And so then you put it close to your lash line as possible. I don't have a lash a little utensil, so I use the other end of my tweezers. This way. Oh my god. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I did the other one while you guys were looking. Um, after you do that, I don't do my final mascara over it until I finish my face, and that way I could spray my face with the finisher and it won't get all gross and have the mascara all over underneath your eyes. That's not pretty. So I'm going to take my Too Faced Absolutely Invisible Translucent Powder, because I like the color of my foundation and I didn't want to change it with some other colored powder. So I'm going to set my foundation. And this also, if you got any shadow on your face from falling or any of that, it kind of sleeps it away. So it's gone. Whee! 
down your neck and get it even. Okay. Then you're gonna do a contour. We're gonna go back to the Lorac um, Pro Contour palette. And I like the brush that it comes with. I'm gonna do the light contour since I'm very light skinned. And you'll want to start up kind of close to your ear and go right in the hollows of your cheek. Hollows? Hollows. Oh, anyway. And you kind of, and then you blend after, after it. I'm going to blend, 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 blend. And go up on your forehead. Give you that sun-kissed look on your head. Blend it down and around. I do the Too Faced uh, Pink Leopard Bronzer. It's my favorite one because it looks like a leopard and that's fantastic. And then you take your, any blush or bronzer blush, brush, bronzer brush will work. Um, I use again another Tarte um, brush that I got from, I think it's the actual contour one because this is supposed to be, um, yeah, it's supposed to be for the contour part. That's the Park Princess, Park Avenue Princess contour palette. And so you get this brush and you do this for the blush and this for the contour and the highlight. Um, I just use the fat end because I really like it for my um, bronzer. And then you go around so it kind of unharshes that line that you got going on. Then you kind of go down your chin. There we go. Then you take your blush. I use the Clinique. Their little new pop line. This one is number 12, Pink Pop. Um, I really like their line. They have so many pretty colors that just came out. Um, I got this one, even though it's kind of light, I, um, I'm not sure if I like it that much, but I do think it's pretty for the summer. I wouldn't wear it in the winter because that's usually when you want like a thicker pink. Um, well, that's when I want a thicker pink. But um, I'm using my MAC, what is that? 120? 180. It's all worn out. I've used this. my favorite blush brush forever. And I've washed it so many times. That's probably why it's coming off. So you do your cheek, cheekbone, not cheekbone, your cheeks. Good. Ta da! Based. The Becca Shimmering Skin per Perfector. I almost said Protector it's like protects me. I love highlighting so much. Um, the Becca Champagne Pop. Talked about it before. It's my favorite, favorite ever illuminator. Holy crap. And you don't need a whole lot of it because it's pretty intense. So you take your, I think this is a contour brush. Yeah, contour brush. This one is the Techniques, um, the Real Techniques one that you can get. I think you can get it at Walgreens and Ulta and CVS, anywhere really. But then you just take a little bit and then you tap it and then you go up. Oh, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And top of your cheekbones and up kind of by your eye. Just to highlight. And on your nose, up on your forehead and your chin. Pretty much everywhere. And then you get that shimmering look. Love it. Okay, final. Before your mascara, because you don't want to do this before. Again, you don't want to do this before your mascara. So I take the Urban Decay D Slick Make Makeup Setting Spray and Oil Control. This is the little one because I was trying it out. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. Um, and I like it. It's pretty good. But you do it in a uh, crop, what was it, an X? Yeah, like an X. And so you have to kind of go out from here and then just let it, let it sit. Okay, mascara. Again, I'm going to use the Lorac, if I can find it, the Lorac Pro Plus Fiber for my top lashes just to kind of stick them together so that they m mesh together. Okay, and then for my bottom lashes, 
I'm going to use the Clinique High Impact Extreme Volume Mascara. I only use it for my bottom lashes because it's such a small, bristly mascara, so it doesn't clump your bottom lashes because nobody wants that. All right, and that is it. It's all hair and makeup and cocktails. Why not? This is great. Hope you subscribe and like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share with your friends. <laughs> all right, thanks, have a great day.